Yeah. 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 I, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's weird. I uh, Idaho fires. I heard Idaho and Canada. I heard it was all blown down from Canada too. It's said on the radio. In Washington. Yeah, Washington too, actually. Well, let me let me tell um, Adam Carroll that we're having issues with the video quality. No, I don't think he is. I, I'm not. I'm not sure um, he would. So what should I just call it? Blurry, yeah. blurry video. Was it was it just the screenshots or was it the, the screenshots? Everything screenshots were blurry. It seemed it seemed at one point they weren't blurry, so I went back to look at them again, and they were still blurry. I mean, you can kind of tell somewhat what's going on, but when you get a bunch of stuff up there, it's all convoluted. Oh really? Yeah. What is too much? Sorry, guys. Brad Layton. Brad Layton speaking. Hey Rosie, how's it going? Well, I'm just starting lecture. Can I call you back at around 10 or so? Okay, I'll do that, Rosie. Okay, sure thing, bye. I think everyone's all excited about my grant. I had the, well, I got this um, $720,000 grant from um, National Science Foundation. I think it's the first one ever at Missoula College. And so I got a call from like the uh, senator's assistant a couple of days ago. And now the, I, I think Rosie Keller's the. What's the grant for? Uh, it, it's with the, um, so it's National Science Foundation and Nikki Fear is the co-PI. She and I are gonna start a little uh, course together where climate change students and energy tech students kind of work together on something. Kind of like the Krelf, you know, that they see some problem or issue and then we coordinate with them um, on wh whatever it happens to be. It can even be a continuation of this EPA grant, you know, get those guys in, in, on, in on this stuff too. Uh, work with the Blackfeet. So they've got a bunch of wind up there, a bunch of sun, and I think, I think one thing that the Blackfeet would really like to do is sort of get off the American grid, you know, be more actual, actually self-sufficient in their, in, in their energy. So um, we're going to do a little bit of that, try to enroll some of their students in our degree programs, which has just been a challenge. I've had a couple of these gals enroll and then I'll get a call like, you know, my house burned down, my husband died, I uh, can't find my kids, like, you, you name it, like, the, the problems. <laughs> you know? And, yeah, it, it's, it, it ends up, it's, it's pretty sad a lot of times. Um, and then what else? I think uh, we're going to start a recycling technology course, and either, I, that's either going to be paid, actually, actually that's going to be paid for <clears throat> with the Department of Labor funds, but the, um, the course itself will be, you know, paid for by that. It'll also let me hire a couple more faculty members. So we've got resumes coming in and try to get more local guys uh, on, on the faculty. So a bunch of stuff. Just to teach. So I want to start a smart grid course and, you know, it take, takes money to teach a course. And I'd kind of like to, um, most of the recycling and the smart grid, i got to hire guys for that. Wind classes. Yeah, I, I've I've thought about doing um, I've thought about doing like a, a big wind. Yeah. But the the issue I I guess the issue I have with that is that they're already so Montana State Northern already has a really good program, and I feel like there's just not enough <coughs> people in the state, and there are not enough quite enough jobs there to justify me starting my own course. So probably the thing to do there. Is just um, 
say, hey, if you want to take a big wind course, take it at MSU Northern, and and just maybe we maybe we kick them a little bit of money so that they can um, put it online. It's not free getting stuff online. Like right now, I'm emailing Adam Carroll saying, hey, can you help us out with the video? And you know, we have to pay his salary. So let me just write this. So everything looks fine on the screen here, and my lap top is new so I'm not sure what is causing. I mean you can pull it up and look at it if you want. Okay. Gary um, seemed to think that um, it might be caused by um, what do you think like excessive graphics on the screen or maybe? It can be excessive graphics because I thought I I um I didn't watch it from front to back uh, because I see most of it. Yeah. And yeah. I just wanted another rundown of some of the prob problems okay. and stuff when I was trying to put batteries. Oh yeah, batteries yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh huh. Nice. Um, but I it was it was too blurry for me to understand it. And then when I went to the um, to the PowerPoint uh, Moodle, it didn't have the rundown for me. And usually I have to do something a couple times. Like my physics tests, I yeah. actually took them three times. Yeah. So I take it once and then I go through it again and sure. then again yep. until the time was totally out. Okay. I would just keep going through them. Sure. Because there's, it's, that was one of my problems with the GRE. I, I'd have to post, you know, go, 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 and I'd get ahead of myself. Did you, did you, did you take the GRE online? No, I took it. Face it down, face to face? In um, Bozeman. Oh, okay. How long ago was that? Was that to get into the master's program? Yeah. A bond for one. Did you? Yeah, the car I was in going to Bozeman blew up halfway there. Threw a rod right through the bottom case, oil all over the road. <laughs> <laughs> did you miss your exam then? No, I just took my thumb out and hit check. Did you, did you make I it? I made it. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> close. <laughs> <laughs> I made it. it was, and the thing about it was, it was they were changing over tests. And if I didn't take that exam that day, I would not have got my results until November. Yeah. If I didn't have the results within a week, sure. I wouldn't have got into the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like I was jogging down the street. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a little like me, man. I, I, I took my GR. So I, I graduated in 92, and I wanted to go back to grad school at some point. And I think it must have been, well, yeah, I, I, I think you can take your GREs and they're valid up to five years going back. And so I remember taking the GREs that fall in 92, just knowing that, you know, just keep keeping it fresh in my head, and I had to wake up at like four or something, and I didn't have an alarm clock, so I called my dad the night before, I'm like, Dad, I know you wake up early, <laughs> Can you, give me a call. <laughs> um, okay, so one of my students, I'm going to say thanks, Brad. Okay, so let's let's do that, and let's just, let's try to check it out. YouTube. I've also sent you an email of policy and um, couple Deborah Layton. William Layton. What? Go to 250, um, <laughs> the course. I, mean, I just thought it'd be more powerful YouTube. than that. Do it in the YouTube search. Oh, okay. No, not the, uh, in the YouTube search, you go 250, what's the course name? Let me get to YouTube first. I think if you get energy in there, you definitely come up. No, it's 250 and then the course name, because I put Brad Layton and then energy, and then I finally found the, there, the energy 250. Oh, nice. EPA. It's uh, seven. Okay, so if I just click that one, should, should I do this one or the one below? I thought they were both six. The one I was looking at was seven. You probably have similar issues. Recording that study, which is from the Pure Review Journal, which comes from the Pure Review Journal. What if we do full screen? Renewable energy. Oh, yeah, okay. I know what I, I, so I bet that's just. Recording that, we've got a $2. I bet that's the, the default resolution. Such a long video. A I, I bet that's uh -huh. not going to weigh it out. dollar for age, which is kind of. I can read it, but just barely the face of integrating the image. Well, I think I can feel more sensitive to it and make it fun. 
Oh, it did, didn't it? It did clear up. Okay. I haven't been using my, my you know, pad. Using this, this one? Days, it's, it's pretty good. Throw it in the closet, it doesn't get charged. A lead, a lead battery. It could also be that it's, um, from it not being where, what computer are you using? Yeah. But these little laptops, they sit. What, if you're on campus or home? They're a little bit more expensive. So, this is a, so there's a lithium ion inside this guy? Uh, not, not from the one huh. I was on, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can go back. Let's just kill this one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give it a fill. Yeah. You go just across it, and there's a hospital parking lot. Sure. Oh, I haven't gone in that parking lot. I mean, I, I know the surface lot there, but yeah. Okay, there's a surface lot. You go over and there's a, there's a parking lot. And it's all hospital parking. Yeah. If you look down underneath of it, there's like old hospital beds. And I thought, you know, it's just kind of neat. I went in there and looked in there. They've got a steam generator sitting right there. Steam. I'm sure it's a steam power generator. It's just the, the steam. You can see the, the steam pipes coming up the one side. Yeah. The turbine and the generator is just sitting right there. Is it hooked up? No. Oh really? Okay. I thought you were going to say we should go. We should go score the gar the uh, re reclaim the uh, technology. Well, I mean, I couldn't do it. A person like me, I wouldn't have to pull. But I bet you somebody in this room might. Have <laughs> I know a couple people over there. Maybe go down and look, take a look through that. You know, oh, that's kind of neat. I'd like to use that. Maybe the, you know. A little salvage action. Yeah. Um, Andrew McChain said that he's he's. Found somebody that's got a glass pulverizer, and I'm just wondering if, if like the U had a glass pulverizer, if um, you know we just pulverize our own glass, yeah. and I think I think the only way to make it happen though is you have to have some kind of law or legislation that you have to buy it, otherwise. Interesting when people turn it into uh, like gravel. Yeah. Like yeah, and I think it ends up. I think New York City is a lot of that. You'll you'll see a lot of it in their streets. I'd like to do that for like landscaping. Yeah. Places, you know? Yeah. I think you have to tumble it though. To get the yeah, to get the sharp edges off. Exactly. Yep. I, I think some of these pulverizers it just it stays in there long enough. It just gets beaten up. Like yeah. it turns it into like beach glass almost. You know, not quite. But um, let's look at the one that you said was kind of. Um, Right here? If it's one or two, because there's two of them there. That's three. 072, 071, 072, 073. Should I hit one or two? It uh, doesn't matter, I guess. Okay, let's try one. Let's try one. The half and fourth. They've produced a half volt each. Yeah, you're usually they're similar to 0.5 to 0.6 volts. Most cells. Buzz, for it's sure. Yeah, even the stuff at the bottom looks kind of hazy, doesn't it? Well, anytime they're receiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They'll either, yeah, they'll either, they'll either make 0.5 volts or nothing. They're, they're either at that voltage or, or not. Or not at all. Well, how much, you know, how, much, how much energy we might want to store total in the whole system? Is this the stuff you're trying to look at again? Yeah. That, is that, I, I could definitely, I mean, there's definitely a lot of wasted white space on the screen. <laughs> I'll give you that much. Well, once you get started, down, I mean, it's, and I hate looking Shoot. Yeah, my, my vision's starting to blur a little bit. So, there it is. I think the best, the best idea I've had yet. The slinky? slinky. All right. Because if you had, like, the paper <laughs> wouldn't that sit in the middle of it, you had a hook on the top, and, and all the light source was in the bottom or maybe even in the top, yep. so that you didn't really have a lot of weight in the bottom. Right. 
out. Yeah. Out oh, I see that whole and that whole thing is sort of translucent. Whatever, whatever you would have in the, the middle of the, the papers, it's kind of like it's kind of like this. Sure. But if you look, that fits. It's perfect. It just fits so you could make this the bottom and the top. Yeah. And then you wouldn't have that big. You know, I um, I wonder if we could print a slinky with the 3D printer. Hmm. That would be kind of wild. How would you program something like that? I mean, it's a pretty simple shape. It's just a helix. And that that's dirt simple. And then uh, and then just you know print it so you got a little filler it's material. Would be between. economically viable to keep printing them with this 3D printer. printer no, no, you you wouldn't do that. But you would. Um, that's just your prototype, you know. That's that's the one you, and you could even you could even print a slinky that was had a little bulge in the middle too, right? Yeah, like that. Yeah. All this That'd be is, a good punch. Up. This is just string in here. It's like a to keep to keep it from opening all the way up. Well, no, the um, to keep the shape. If you look in there, it's like a hemp rope or something. Oh yeah. This is the. Aha. All kinds of good stuff in there. Fiber optics. Oh, yeah? I think so. But it, I don't think it works. Is that, is that cable? Um, optic cable? Yeah, it's supposed to light up. Okay. I got it off of a Burning Man bike that a guy took to Burning Man. Uh huh. Specialized in the Gary Fisher were bouncing like 30 feet in the air. Fell off his car? Off his car. Aww. And this was hooked to the Gary Fisher that he threw away by the dumpster that I reclaimed and gave to my girlfriend. Which he just chucked the Gary Fisher? He ch it was, yeah, the only thing I had to do was um, put new cables, rewire the cables on it, and I changed the uh, back. I put a special. The frame was still good, right? It was all I'm good. sure the frame was fine. It's all, it's yeah. all good. My girlfriend yeah. rides it all over. I wish I hadn't given it to her. <laughs> Bonus points. I got a kiss for it. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think it's fiber optic. Okay. Well, I thought what we'd do in the second hour is um, do a little experiment, do a little more planning on our on our gadget. But yeah, guys, most of these are just battery packs. Okay. So we'll do we'll do lab in the second half. I thought, what the heck? We'll do a little bit of two fifty lab. But hey, I I wanted to show you. Um, this this thing uh, this, this is more more for Adam's original question. So um, Northwestern Energy G um, Dam purchase, and I'm sure there's stuff out here in the. Um, okay, let's let me read this hearing. I actually know one of the lawyers on this case. Um, I don't know if her name's gonna gonna be in here, but the, what I'm hearing here's the here's just the fundamental the fundamental issue is um, okay. Let, let's just read this a little bit here. Helena, Montana. Northwestern Energy. Should I make that a little bit bigger? Let's just so we aren't wasting any white space. There we go. I can't make it much bigger. So, Northwestern Energy makes its case urging state le legislators to approve the company's purchase of 11 Montana dams. So, I mean, this is how the, the sausage gets made, right? We were, we were like, how does, how, does money, how does energy get priced? Mm -hmm. Tuesday was the first day of hearings with the Public Service Commission, the Montana agency tasked with approving or denying the purchase. So I guess the PSC is just a state agency, and I'm assuming, I don't know the structure of government, I'm assuming every state has one of these. I believe they do. Yeah. One, of, one of these things. And when, um, you know, when I see the word commission, do, do, do 
you know the root of that word, like what it actually means, com commission? There's, a, there's also a commissioner, and you can also commission a building. But if you just look at it straight up, co means together, mm -hmm. and mission means you're going somewhere. So we would assume that this particular commission is a group of people that say, this is where we're going together, I guess. And it's public because we're reading it. I mm -hmm. That's not the same one that sat in front of the mountain water thing, was it? I, it probably is. Yeah. You know, I, I, would, I would think so because it looks like they're, 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 they're looking at these bigger utility issues that, that have an impact on everybody. They're elected and they're supposed to represent their district just like a so, legislator. So going, going back to my whole entropy and information paper, I would say I hate to do it, but I actually love to do it. <laughs> this, what we're looking at is, is information. And, the, and, and, and ideally, I think, we the people should have the same information that Northwestern Energy has and uh, who are they buying this thing from? PPL Montana. Pennsylvania Power and Light. OK. And do you know the history there at all? Really, other than their, you know, um, gosh, I just, and I'm reading, I'm looking at CFR code federal regulations, and I know the Tennessee Valley Authority is in there. Uh huh. You know, they might be there. The Tennessee. Basically, they're a big energy company out of here. Kind of neat because I have that. I have the link posted on that. You know, I'm saying it's oh, uh, TV. You're saying, so obviously a big company from out east. Yeah, and they own some Montana generation. I think they own part of the coal generation too. And so they uh, so they probably own part of the physical structure. It's part of their big energy portfolio, you know. Uh-huh. Um, so so it sounds it sounds like PPL owns it. Eleven. They must be you know, they must hire people to run it, uh, maintain it, whatever. Okay, so PPL owns the dams and what uh, and Northwestern wants to buy them for 900 million. So here we go. Uh, the company said, I guess this means the company meaning Northwestern Energy, said purchasing the dam would raise electricity bills around $3.50. Now does that mean average per month, per year, per day? That's a good question. <laughs> that was the same question. <laughs> you know, same because question because this, this gets back, this, I mean, right here, this gets back to the um, energy versus power thing. Mm -hmm. And so the 300, the 350 cents is, a, is analogous to energy. It's an amount. But what I, what I want to know is what's the rate? Is it, is it 350 per unit of time? So I don't know, how, I don't know the, the, the power of that. And this, is, this is one big problem with uh, journalism. A lot of times it has. <laughs> no, so, it's not really a problem with journalists. I don't just it's, it's, don't think I don't think when the journalist asks a question, he doesn't ask the question of rate. Yeah. Like as in when I asked, okay, so you got a, a solar panel one meter wide. Yeah. You know, what's the return on that? What is the return rate? Maybe I should say, what's the rate? You know, it's okay. So you got. It's, it's getting a thousand watts and then you went into the big thing yeah. instead of just telling me well it's, it's, <laughs> well, it's I, I, the I, I, time I, is like one second it'll return over if it could absorb all thousand watts at a hundred hundred percent efficiency yeah. the return rate would be one second thousand watts per one second yeah every second every second yeah. but there it doesn't have that efficiency so you had to pull out your engineering map and go down <laughs> to a long list and give me the x and the y coordinates yes, I, yes, and it turned off on us yes i did yes i did but you're right i just i'm not it's I'm not, not it's not necessarily the journalist's problem yeah. or the scientist's problem they're just speaking in two different terms and if they could make that term in the middle to where the girl that's curling her yeah. curling iron could say "Ooh, it just it just took me a thousand joules to curl my curling iron <laughs> but most girls are like what the hell's a jewel yeah. oh i got one in my ear I know. <laughs> You see, yeah, I was so thinking of a vanity for like Vanity Fair, an article that going Vanity Fair. Oh, Vanity Fair wouldn't be bad. There's, there's a, my wife picked up a copy of Time, and there was this House of the Future on the on the cover, and there was show, it was basically smart grid. Mm -hmm. Passive house? Uh, no, it wasn't passive. It was it was much more active actually. It had a water sprinkler that was tied into the Weather Channel, 
so it would know when the, you know, like don't turn on it because a thunderstorm comes in five minutes. There was, uh, you know, they, they made the thing hurricane proof. Yeah. Um, they're, they're talking about these other uh, floating houses. So when climate change goes for real, like all of Florida starts floating. <laughs> and it, like they weren't kidding. This is all dead, dead serious. Like there's people working on it. Uh, anyway, so uh, 350 would stabilize rates in the long. Now, here's the other thing. So, stabilize rates. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't it doesn't say lower. It doesn't say raise. And what and as I think what it's doing, and, and here's here's the the fundamental economics. So, Northwestern Energy um, does have 900 million dollars to spare, but the, the Fundamental issue here, and this is what I've been talking to my, my friend about, is that they could actually get them for less. They could actually get it for 600 million instead. And what that would mean is that the, the, the rates wouldn't have to go as high because they didn't invest that much money up front. Mm -hmm. But when they say stabilize, like, oh yeah, let's just make it more expensive than it has to be and then we can pass along the savings to the customer down down the road. That that's the way I'm understanding. I don't. I don't and it's it's, it's I think uh, it's pretty Kyle, subtle. Kyla Mucky can speak to this a lot. Who can? One day or whenever she comes, because I think she. Was oh yeah, Kyla. Yeah. yeah. She put out some sort of publication. She thinks it's a good thing. A lot of people think it's a good thing. A good thing to to spend this to much money the, or to, to buy the dams. Dams. Okay. Because it puts more renewables into state. Well, is it is it really is it state control or is it Northwestern Energy uh, control? Because uh, Northwestern yeah, Energy is a is a private, private company. Yeah, I don't mean state control. I guess I just no, mean. it wouldn't it wouldn't put it in any, any different control. It's just changing hands. So Northwestern Energy is saying, okay, look, I built up all of these transmission lines and all of these power grids. Now I want to buy the stations that is pumping most of the power through my grids. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, I'm going to charge you three dollars and fifty cents more. Per whatever X yeah. amount, and you know it's going to be cool for us because in the bottom line we are going to make money because we won't be doing this unless we're making money. I, and that's pretty much the way it is. I am looking forward to discussing it with her because another kind of dark side of this is that I think um, I think the legislation, perhaps as as uh, prescribed or legislated, I don't know the word by by. Um, Montana Senate, you know, the Montana legislature said that you, you have to buy, you have to provide or show that a certain fraction, I don't know what it is, 15% of your energy comes from renewables. Yeah. And if they if they do this, then, then you know, they'll own the dams, they can measure it, control it, yeah. and say, look, we're providing 15%, and therefore, we don't need any more solar. We don't need any more oh, wind because we've got this 15% already coming from the dams. And I, and I think that may be one of the ways they're thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, okay. Uh, but someone's convinced one of said the deal could put Montana's on the hook for 800 million. Yeah, it means we, you know, the, the savings is passed along. It began with North Virginia's second command, but by the time the Public Service Commission in, doesn't want to testify. So there's no, it's not simple, you know, and, and you can complain about my complicated engineering. I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining <laughs> at all. That's just the way you understand oh, yeah. it, and that's the way you learn to understand yeah. it. Other people understand things in a different way, and it's just hard for somebody to come out of their different way and say, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's complicated. Well, and I, I think if you dug into the, the economic, like the, the, the fuzzy economics that these guys are doing, they don't have a suitcase full of nine hundred million one dollar bills either. I mean, there, there's all there's all these long term financing mechanisms that they have cobbled together. Um, so let's read down just a little bit more. I think people are interested in having reliable and affordable energy. Uh, I think it's the main concern customers would have. Fine. Okay. Um, I was 
reading the P3 grant. Yeah. And 40% of what we do can be um, like given to foreign countries, given to another school. Like, what do you mean? 40%? Well, if we tie in, say, like a school in sub saharan Africa somewhere uh, of higher education. Yeah. That we can, 40% of what we do, I'd have to read it. You mean, you mean our budget gets shared with another school? Well, yeah. Oh, okay. So that, um, say, we are making we are making these lights. And yeah. that's, that's why it rang in my brain. We are making these lights here. We're going to sell. We're going to sell one to, to an American customer. Yeah. They're going to pay to buy one for somebody in Africa, but we don't want to make it here and ship it there. Oh. It's more to to make it here and ship it there. Oh, oh, it would oh. be to ship materials there and have some other people make it and present it. Okay. That that sounds good. It's I mean, it, Taiwan. It, it's I mean, it's an well, American way. These sure, days. sure. It's, it's, capital, yeah. it's sending the money that way, and we'll never see it again. Do you think it would be best to? Um, I mean, another uh, another. But it is for the planet, so. Yeah, I mean, another another source that I don't think a lot of people think about this would be to have it um, manufactured and say Browning too. Yeah, I, was, I was looking at that too. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and that could even be um, that could even be a test run because you know can can you can you assemble these with low skill labor? And I, I've seen the economics of this before. It, it's it's bizarre, but um, back when I was <clears throat> uh, working on the faculty at Drexel, there was a family operation that was making welding plat welding tables and these things were eight feet by eight feet eight inches thick of steel eight inches thick. <laughs> yes I mean you, you could well I mean they're, they're made for welding nuclear vessels and tanks I mean just you know imagine and they, and they would just you know put a room of these together and so just as, as big as you want what do you want to weld okay we'll make the welding table for it but uh, too expensive to do it in the U.S., so they were they were casting sand casting these in India, and very little infrastructure there either, but just dirt cheap labor, and so they'd get 20, 30 guys out in the middle of the hot baking sun, pour in the, the hot metal, and then they just have this you know this ar logs, army of kind of logs, yeah pretty much like pretty much. <laughs> And and you know there's there's a there's a lot of a lot of people in the world that yeah, could could use a job. I, I think I think unfortunately a lot of it does become kind of sweat shoppy and slave labory. But I don't know what what are you what are you gonna do? <laughs> a lot of economists too say it, it's it's good to put Chinese people to work. Well, yeah, let's let's finish this thing off, and then we'll we'll get on with our own gadget. Well, I don't know that it works because I tried to put batteries in and it didn't light up. All right, we'll we'll go do some lab work here in a second. Uh, Northwest Energy officials said that customer rates would increase at least six percent right away. Okay, that's not that bad, but it's a fair amount. But then decrease current rates or even go lower. They argue that bills be uh, generate ninety percent of its electricity and not buy it at market rates. I wonder what they, um, I wonder what percentage they generate now. Do we know how much power those dams produce? Be a good question. What dams are they? We'd have to. Um, it says there's eleven of them, right? Yeah. Let's check them out. Category dams in Montana. Wikipedia. Might be on the Vicky. Hydroelectric power plants. Let's do this one. I don't want dams. I'd really have hydroelectric power. Hundreds of megawatts. I would guess that. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this one. That one's gone. Um, That's a super fund. It even says super fund site. Yeah. 
Okay. It's right. Yeah, it's it's uh, five miles that way. <laughs> Maybe not even. What which one of these is which one of these have you guys heard of? I don't even. I guess I've seen the Hungry Horse Dam. Let's just. All right. Let's just let's just check it out. Um, hydroelectric power generation. So Hungry Horse is half a gigawatt. There's the um, there's the kilowatt hours. That's that was in 2007. 2007. So let's let's just do it tiny little back of the envelope here. Check this out. I, I, like, I like doing Microsoft Excel on the fly. Okay, so but we'll, we'll just assume that the Hungry Horse Dam is average. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. We can refine our results here in a little bit. But let's do, um, so 907, and this is um, kilowatt hours. Uh, 907, 000. Yeah, well, oh no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking kilowatts. Okay, so control one number ding ding. Would that be nine hundred and seven megawatt hours? It would it would be nine hundred and seven thousand megawatt hours. Yeah. It would be nine hundred and seven gigawatt hours. Yeah. yeah. And now let's let's do this one. So megawatts and it's at uh, 428. yeah 420 so that that's if it's running full out right so let's do this um, average power and this is for 2007 we can maybe assume that that's an average year equals so we're going to take um, we're going to take this many kilowatt Hours. Actually, let's do it this way first. Uh, 407 megawatt Francis turbines, huh? Uh, no, four four turbines, yeah. each at 107. Yeah. Yeah. So let's change the let's just change the kilowatt hours to watt hours. Insert. So I want to I want to put this in dollars per watt. You know, because you know when you're going to go buy, you're going to put your solar on your house, or your wind, or whatever. It, it ends up being like the dollars per watt, and like the magic number in solar is a buck a watt, right? Usually it's like two or three bucks. So let's just figure out how many dollars per watt this thing is worth. That's where I'm going with this. So watt hours equals that times one thousand, right? So we were at nine oh seven times. Well, so we were at 9.7 times 10 to the, uh, 1, 2, 3, well, 907 times 10 to the 6th, which 9.7 times 10 to the 8th, uh, yes, yeah, so we just went up by three orders of magnitude. We went, up, went up from 9 times 10 to the 8th to 9 times 10 to the 11th. Watt hours. Um, so now we need to divide this by the number of hours to get how many watts the thing made, right? <clears throat> uh, hours in a year. So we, yeah, hours in a year, yep. Divided by 365, divided by 24. Control one, number, dink, 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 dink. Okay, so it was, it was running at 103 megawatts. Now here's its um, capacity factor equals uh, that times 
one e six so times a million because it was that many megawatts divided by uh, that let's, let's do insert this is watts uh, average. So capacity factor again is what it actually generated compared to what it could generate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me make sure I'm doing this right. Number. So, so this this is actual. This is capacity. Right. Let's, uh, let's take these. Uh, <clears throat> number. Okay. And I did that wrong. <laughs> I'm glad I checked. So it's actually equals this number divided by this number. So it's sort of like an efficiency. It's the small number divided by the big number. So the capacity factor of the Hungry Horse Dam was. 24% in 2007, which isn't too bad. Now, um, let's do this. See, you can, we see, I mean, you can sit here and do this for a living all day, you know? Yeah. Or, yeah. Does, does, does it doesn't <laughs> What's that? It doesn't, does it, it doesn't pump the water all the time. It doesn't let it go through the spillway. No, it doesn't. That's no. No, it doesn't. And, and um, probably, even if it did, probably if it was making power all the time, it, it wouldn't hit that much. I mean, you, you would need that much water flowing through the thing all the time. And it just doesn't rain that much. It doesn't snow that much. So 24% uh, capacity factor, you know, this, it's the, this is the technological capacity factor. There's probably also the, the natural capacity factor in there, too, just how much... Uh, Okay, so there's your capacity factor, 0.24. Now, just in the interest of time, I kind of want to wrap it up and get on to our little experiment. But let's just assume that the Hungry Horse Dam is average. And let's now, uh, so I'm just, I'm just going to call this the Hungry Horse. And I'll merge these cells. Underline that bad boy, and then let's let's go uh, total av estimate over here. Come on, estimatage. Good word. I think people will come downtown to a festival regardless of what you call it. Especially if there's alcohol. <laughs> you mean, since there will be alcohol. <laughs> since it is Missoula. Uh, so I'm going to do this equals um, that times 11, right? And I'll take this, I'll just drag that over. Copy, paste, copy, paste. You guys see what I'm doing on that? Just a relative reference. And then um, copy, paste. And then let's do. Um, so the capacity factor, our estimated capacity factor will, will be the same. Try to get this all on one screen here. And then um, let's, let's do, here's the, here's the money over here, uh, cost. And then we'll do, uh, this, this down here will be dollars per watt, right? So um, let's just. 
Yeah, let's do, is it 800 or 900 million? Uh, it said both. Yeah, it was 900 million. Well, we would be shouldered for 800 million of it. Put Montana's on the hook for 800 million. Well, why is that though? What, why, where's the hundred? Where's the extra 100 million go? Maybe from the investment. Maybe that's um, 350. What's how many times is 350 going to a million? Two dollars and fifty cents going to a million, and we could average out what the return rate. Yeah. So that would That's getting down in the weeds too. Yeah, that, that that's a that's a tricky one. Not it's not quite as simple as three fifty because we don't even know what the three fifty is. I, I would I think it's probably per month. That's what I would guess. Well but I have to but, pay three dollars and fifty cents more per month for electricity on solar panels. Because I know I could make it See, up. This is a good thing. Yeah. I it's know I could, you. I know I could make it up in <laughs> it is a good thing. Days, you know. So let's so millions of dollars. This is um, nine hundred. Let's just do that, and then um, here's dollars again. So equals that times one e six, right? And then uh, let's put this right here. Equals now we're doing dollars per watt, right? Because you want, yeah, you want dollars per watt, dollars per watt, seventy-nine cents. Still pretty cheap. Because when I when I was looking at the ML Solar, remember guys, we were going to try to buy those, um, buy some of those solar cells from ML Solar. That's about what they come out to. The, just just the cells come out to about um, eight you know eighty cents a watt. Same thing if you if you buy a pallet of, of panels, it's about eighty cents a watt. Now let you go and install it, do the engineering, et cetera. That's where the, the extra fees come in. So now obviously we just assume that Hungry Horse was an average dam. It might be the biggest one. It might be the smallest one. So this could be this could be significant you know substantially off, but guarantee you there's a there's a fleet of economists sitting there running these numbers yeah. in, in the in the capital right now too. So I wonder what we pay in dollars per watt as consumers. Yeah. Well that's the um we don't pay we don't pay dollars per watt oh, though. No, I just I just wondered what that would be. How would how would you do that though? Oh no, we could do that. Yeah. We could do that. Let me, let me, let me. Let's do that. I, I like that. That's a good way to think about it. It was the same problem I was, I was having with my initial energy paper: is comparing in joules per cubic meter. Like, how do you, what's a what's a cubic meter of photons, really? And that it was, it was very eye-opening to, to to run that exercise. How many photons are in one cubic meter? Pretty much. Well, yeah. How, how many? How much energy is worth of photons or a cubic meter? And it turned to be just in the um, it's microwatts. It's just microwatts. Let me save this. Depends on whether the uh, sun's shining or not. There's so many variables in that. Oh, well, no, this was just the sun is shining. Oh, the, okay. the assumption was that there are photons. And that they're going, well, there are okay. photons when the sun isn't shining, too. That's right. You've got to be clear on that. Uh, how, how many uh, photons are we when I When I go to bed at night, I'm not sure the, the sun is, is still shining. When but the moon is half full in the sky, yeah. and it's 3 o'clock in the morning, yeah. how many photons are reflecting off of the moon back to the Earth? There are still photons. There are. Not, not many. I'm cutting hairs. I think the, you know, in fact, that, that wacky... Um, you got, well, you're in the practicum. Did you see that 
solar sphere that Jonathan Bow was looking at. Apparently, that thing will do will collect energy at night from the moon cool. and from the stars. It's it's just you know it's this giant eyeball that that focuses down on this little tiny uh, photo array in the back, okay. and it might not be much, but it, it's it's. What's it doing otherwise? Just bouncing off the earth. Yeah. That's, what I never, that's what I can never understand about all the vampire stories. They can be out in the dark. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like, oh. That's what yeah, that, but it doesn't really matter that the sun still getting sunshine. Right? I think that's why they have to howl. No, those are... Um, what, what oh, are oh, oh, oh. Maybe that's why they need to drink blood. I don't know. What's that? You wrote a fiction book. Cool. Are they selling? The uh, unpublished vampire fiction book that I got. Is it selling? No, it's unpublished. Oh, it's unpublished. It's unpublished. Are, you, are your other ones selling? No, they're all unpublished. They're sitting in my office desk. Dude. Go ahead. It's not ready to read. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it'll, it'll be like the last the last Picassos, the, the lost oh, Orem novels? It's more like The Flight of the Navigator mixed with um, Farscape kind of thing. Farscape? Huh. Yeah. Watching side by Farscape. Huh. They're on a living ship, an actual living ship. Yeah, okay. And he's an astronaut, and he got this good through a wormhole. Is it supposed to be futuristic, like Isaac Asimov kind of deal? Okay. Futuristic, the Farscape stuff, I think, is futuristic because the space module he's in doesn't exist when he gets shot through the normal. So, anyways. So, is this, is this helpful? I mean, this, this is exactly, yeah. I, I think we're like witnessing how energy gets priced. In, in, in its all of its ugly glory, and, and the nice nice thing about why well, I think the nice thing about it is that in the day of the internet, we the people can see this happening in real time, right? Whereas before, all the decisions are getting made in Helena. Maybe Paul Revere comes over here on a, on his horse after it's happened, we're like, oh dang it, you know, <laughs> we, we lost. Or so. I don't know that much about it. I'm just just now. I mean, you can see I'm I'm, just, I'm still kind of ignorant about I actually myself. Actually, have to apologize during the last storm of that or the last part of that. I was having like this intense brainstorm in my brain. It was like monsoon. It's okay. You started talking about your girlfriend, Burning Man, bicycles. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. But it was in the last part of that. I kind of missed some of the last part of that. Um, oh. Seven Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, no, this is this is this is worthwhile to back up on. So what we did just to review our little bit of research, is we know that Montana has 11 dams. Um, we could only find about 10 of them listed. One was a super fun. It's not making juice anymore. We picked one at random. We said Hungry Horse. And we saw that in 2007, it generated 900 million kilowatt hours. So we took that number, put it in here. There's a 900 million kilowatt hours. And we also know that it has a capacity of 428 megawatts. And what that means is that of its capacity to make 428 megawatts, it only made, uh, let's just change this. This is probably easier to see. Let's make it a number. of its capacity to make 428 megawatts, it only made um, 103 watts. How do we know that? Because we saw the number of watt hours, we divided by the number of hours in a year, and that, that's, that was its average power. Was it making that 3, 365-24-7? No. Sometimes it was making nothing, just like at night when the sun doesn't shine. Werewolves, vampires. Okay. 
don't go there, don't go there. <laughs> and so what we then did, I came over here and just multiplied everything by 11. Just took took the, every single number from Hungry Horse, multiplied by 11. That's, that's all I did. So you can see right here, I took that uh, number from B4, multiplied by 11. Uh, same thing here. Took the capacity multiplied by 11. Now, if we assume that it could that the actual uh, produced by all 11 dams is so a thousand, uh, a million, a billion. It's 10 terawatt hours. Sounds a little high. Could be Hungry Horse is the biggest dam. We should probably go check here in a second. Um, we then came up with all 11 dams were running at about uh, 1.1 gigawatts. That's that, that's that's that seems pretty reasonable. Um, now here, here's how let's let's just see how reasonable it is. Um, I like this one. Now, how many Northwestern Energy customers are there? In the state? Well, no. How many? How many um, There's 75 consumers in the county of Missoula. I believe it's county or city. 75,000. 75,000. Uh, yeah. Because what, what we could do, we could go back to our um, North American consumer average. Actually, before we do that, I want to wrap, I want to wrap this thing up. We, there's a, we could keep playing these numbers all day, but um, anyway, just to get back to it, I divided 900 million, let's turn that into currency, I divided 900 million dollars by 1.1 gigawatts and got number no currency and got 79 cents per watt because that's the dollars and that's the watts so it's it's a little bit like and you, and you said this is gonna you know 350 a month is gonna want me to go out want to go out and buy solar well the question is no, it's okay, but it's a valid one because it might say Northwestern Energy might say, "Gosh, this is too expensive. Let's just go out and buy a bunch of solar." You know, let, let's go buy a bunch of photovoltaics. We, they, they probably already have real estate everywhere, um, but if it actually is seventy-nine cents a watt, it's going to be tough to put in solar for less than that. So, wow. you know, some, somebody in somebody in their little books is like. Yeah, 900 million is a lot, but look, it's, it, it's still less than solar. And, and it's the same thing we see in those um, Everett textbooks. We're like, okay, here's the, here's the dollars per watt of your offshore wind, here's your dollars per watt of your geothermal, here's your dollar, you know, every, every one of these technology, and here's your dollars per watt of your coal, you, you name it. Every one of these has a, has a sort of a dollars per watt uh, figure associated with it. So. They're like, yeah, it's, 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 it's more expensive than it has to be, but it's, it's still competitive. They, they pushed it up as high as they could without, you know, going up into the next to the numbers. Question? Comment? No, Brainstorm? I'm just one of the people that have, have tried to learn to point out all the little um, intricacies of stuff because I've been sitting less than people. You didn't pick at me. Yeah. It's not going to be carbon neutral because they're going to use bees and carbon emission vehicles to transport. Oh, of course, so yeah. They, they cut the little technicality, and it makes it seem like even all the little breaks that you're going to get doesn't really matter. Yeah. So I've tried to look at that. What, what about maintenance cost? I mean, overall maintenance cost of solar as opposed oh, sure. to... As opposed to um, yeah, this is just the capital cost we're looking at right now. We're not looking yeah. at maintenance, yeah. See, so down the road, once you put a solar panel in, What's the breakdown? Yeah, you know. Um, you don't have to loop parts. 
you don't have to wrench on parts. You don't have to do really anything but stand there and watch it generate. Yeah. You might have to get new batteries down the road at one time or another because your batteries are just not going to charge. Right? If you're off grid, yeah. If you're off grid. Yeah. No, it's true, and I think I think most of them have life. Most of the PV is lifetime of thirty years, and most of these dams have lifetimes of 100, 200 years. And they've already been up. That one, what, nineteen forty nine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's already been up nearly a hundred years. It's got like thirty years left. Well. Nineteen fifty three. Sorry. Yeah. No. Just say anything at the bottom of the article about. What other people think about it? Let's take a look. Commission has to turn over every stone. So there's your maintenance. So the yeah maintenance upkeep. The, the, the concrete cracks, the bearings go bad, and the turbines. Uh, I was, that's what I was thinking. The sure. The concrete. Um, yep. You know, what's going to say that the earth doesn't shift? The earth sure, man. Come through Absolutely. Uh, you got to scrub those down. You got to. I mean, I think you got to guard a dam more than you would have to guard a solar solar panel field. From terrorism. Probably. Because, I mean, somebody can go out and pull up a solar panel field. You know, there's not a lot of human health risks that that. Maybe a little bit of lead exposure in the air with lead acid batteries. You know, and then sometimes you got risk, the risk to the water tables. You've got all sorts of testing that you're going to have to keep doing. There's probably a lot more maintenance involved in a dam purchasing a dam, but right now you pay for it, it's ready to go solar panel, you'd be solar array, you'd be down the field. Yep, yep, yep. Gosh, this one doesn't give the um, the power. Height and length. It, oh wait, the maximum is 18. Much smaller. It is much smaller. Yeah. <laughs> so this is probably an overestimate. That one doesn't actually store water behind it. Well, it has to. It wouldn't work if it didn't. So there's there's the storage. Oh, this is the one in Great Falls. Yeah, that's, that's a good looking dam. I've, I've uh, pedaled right past that thing. So Black Eagle, so we, we could sit here and do the same thing. In fact, this, I mean, this, if you're interested in it, this would be a good little, this would be a great exercise. But, you know, to finish this, finish this bad boy out. You know, you can take this. Copy. Paste. What did we say, 18? Yeah. And um, we, we, could, we could estimate that it's, um, let's just say that its capacity factor is the same. Um, I don't know what you run of the river, though. It doesn't, it doesn't stop. And with the river running, it's, it's not, um, well, I guess, I guess we have to look to see it. It might be at a greater a greater efficiency because the um, the run of the river means that it doesn't need to have the water stored up and then downfall and then it's stored back. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 um, so it's just constantly flowing. Yeah. It's it, too bad they didn't have the bigger didn't have the bigger turbines in there, but you wouldn't have the pressure to run them probably. Yeah, it's a I think it's a fairly low head dam. It's not it's not like the Hoover Dam. <laughs> so anyway, you, you could come in here and, and do this um, kilowatt hours. This, if this is its um, uh, 
wattage. Um, let's see, where'd this, where'd this number come from? <coughs> so if we assume it has the same capacity factor, um, we, can, nine, we can say that this equals that times that. Right, we could just we could just run right. We could run this whole thing backwards. So if this is um, uh, divided by, we could say that this equals that times three sixty-five times twenty-four, and we could say that this, um, yeah, this equals that divided by a thousand. Okay, see what I just did right there? I just ran, I, I assumed it had the same capacity factor since it wasn't given, but right away, what we could, we, what, what we could then start doing on this um, average, we could take these two actual numbers and, and multiply it by 5.5 instead of 11. Does that make sense? So we, we doubled the number of samples we have to half the number. Okay. All right, well, let's just let's just stop there on the recording for an hour.